Hi guys, this is Louise. I have shown you several of my watercolor bird paintings by now, but I realized that I haven't really talked that much about how I paint them. I've mostly just used them as a backdrop for talking about other things. And since I'm currently in the middle of planning and filming a whole series of classes on painting watercolor birds, I thought this might be a good time to talk more about my bird painting process and give you a little tutorial, a little paint along. So I'm gonna walk you through the painting of this European robin here. I didn't film the sketch of this one, but as you can see, my sketches are pretty light and simple, as simple as I can manage. What's most important to me when drawing the sketch is that the placement on the paper is right and that the proportions and the most important features are placed correctly. In this case, I've also marked out some shadow shapes and some edges between different colors so that I don't have to guess about that when I'm painting. I'm starting with the feet on this one simply because they call out to me. <laughs> I love bird feet and they are the clear focal point on this particular bird, so I want to get them right from the start. I'm emphasizing the darker color of this back foot that's in shadow because it gives a sense of depth and I really like that in my paintings. After the feet, I block in the eye, another detail that's important to get right. I always leave a little highlight on the upper part of the eyeball since that's where the light usually hits. Then we have the rest of the bird. I know some artists like to paint the shadows first, and I've tried that a few times, but for some reason I just don't like it when I do it. <laughs> it's like the approach doesn't really work for me. So what I do is I start with the lightest colors that I can see in the reference. In this robin, that's the light beige of the wings and the back. I'm switching up the colors a little bit as I go to get more of that wet on wet transition. Same with the orange of the face and throat. I paint it right next to the beige so that the edges blur together. But I'm sticking to the lightest manifestations of these colors for this layer. In watercolor, we work from light to dark since we can't erase out color after it's been laid in. We can lighten it and we can use gouache and, and there's a bunch of different tricks, but we can't get that white of the paper back. So I always try to be very careful with my first color layer until I know exactly where I want my highlights to be. I'm switching to a flat brush for the wings because I find that it makes it easier to keep the lines really thin and crisp and even. It's possible with a round brush too, but you have to be really steady on the hand and I often fail at that. I've got my lightest layers in and now it's time to add contrast and shadows, starting with the orange throat. I like a more toned down color palette in my birds and not so much the cartoonish, bright and vibrant look. So I'm pushing myself to go as dark as I can on the throat without losing those bright orange highlights. I'm going really dark under the wing because I love contrast and watercolors always lighten as they dry.
I sometimes use water-soluble graphite pencils in my watercolors to add extra crisp details, in this case the beak. What's so great about the water-soluble graphite is that you can draw with it just like with a normal pencil and then you can go over it with a damp brush. And when you do that, you're gonna notice that it darkens and you can blend it and it works kind of like watercolor and it looks like it too, so it's really useful. Now all that's left is detail work. The primary feathers, as they're called, these long wing feathers in the front, they have a darker edge to them, so that's what I'm using my flat brush to add in now. And then some final tweaking. Adding in some more color, lightening up some places and darkening some other places, adding some details, until I'm happy. And there we have it, the European Robin in all its glory. Feel free to restart this video and paint along with me if you want. Like I said, I'm working on a series of Skillshare classes on painting birds in watercolor, starting with songbirds, like this one. In those classes, I'll go into more depth on technique and process and bird anatomy, <laughs> and also demonstrate birds from different angles and in different poses. So if you want to learn more about painting birds, I suggest that you get on my email list, link in the description, and you will be informed immediately when a new class is released. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.